Destroying Shibuya, conquering planets and assassinating political figures, there's really a ton of reasons why a lot of anime characters should have a bounty placed on their heads. Now of course in One Piece, bounties are the main way to determine just how threatening and powerful a character actually is and given all the crazy illegal stuff that people in anime somehow just keep doing, we're gonna explore exactly how massive the price on the heads of some of the other anime characters should actually be. You know, like Krolo, Madara or even even Freezer, but starting with maybe the most crazy of them all, the Omen Sukuna. But wait a second, how in the world are we even gonna start assessing how much his head would actually be worth? Well, the good thing is, turns out the Marines in One Piece have an ace up their sleeve when they need to assign potential bounty to off-world threats. Meet Commander Jerry Hettrick, who assigns bounties for the world government in the One Piece currency berries. And very conveniently, his devil fruit lets him see vile criminals and strong fighters from even other other universes who could potentially destroy the Grand Line. And now what Jerry sees in Sukuna's case is a true demon with power enough to just casually level entire cities in a single attack. Through the use of his curse techniques cleave and dismantle, he's able to slice and dice everything and anything he wants. If it's a living creature with cursed energy, cleave will do the trick, and if it's a building, forest or even an entire island, this mantle will also destroy it, and once he's used both both of these techniques, he can then even unleash his ultimate move, Divine Flame, a burst of fire that can destroy entire city blocks in an instant. But of course that's not all, because with reversed curse technique he can heal nearly any wound and with his various domain techniques like amplification or hollow wicker basket, he's basically safe from most barrier based powers as well. However, the real nightmare is of course his own domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, a domain with no barrier spending 200 meters, this hellscape unleashes cleef and dismantle attacks on every target within its borders. Basically cutting everyone down like the weaklings they are. And if that's all not enough, he can also infuse his divine flame into his domain and burn anything in there to a crisp as seen in chapter 259 of Jutsu Kaisen. Really, it's no wonder he truly is the strongest in that universe. His fearsome aura is truly something else and he radiates a level of of Terra may be only matched by the King of Beasts Kaido. I mean, think about it. The flames, the joking attitude, and the kind of sad, depressed desire for someone strong to fight, like, like these two have surprisingly much in common, which is why Jerry gave Sukuna a bounty to rival him, clocking in at 4.5 billion berries. In other words, we're starting off very strong, but if you thought that Sukuna was broken, can you imagine what sort of bounty the ghost of the Uchiha clan would have? Because that's right, next up we're gonna look at the one-man army in itself, Madara Uchiha. Now, it's pretty obvious to anyone I think that Madara is beyond terrifying. He's a master of all chakra natures, and thanks to his eternal Mangeki or Sharingan, he could summon a Susanoo that puts him on par with the god of Shinobi Hashirama Senju. With his Gunbai, he can defect nearly every jutsu, and while he was alive, he nearly conquered the entire world. But Honestly, it's the fact that he's even stronger dead that really sets him apart from everyone else in the world of Naruto. Because that's right, before he died, he unlocked the ultimate dojutsu, the Rinnegan. Now, for the few non-Naruto fans out there, that's just a nitty-gritty way to say super god-level eyeballs. These eyes nearly allowed Naga no Pain to destroy the entire leaf village and capture nearly every Chinchuriki. They give their wielder control over the literal laws of reality, life and death, negating people's powers, eating souls, and so, so, so much more. So really, it's no wonder that once Madara was brought back to life, he single-handedly defeated the ally shinobi forces and the five kage all by himself. And to be honest, even before he became the Ten Tails host, Madara was already a world-class villain, but once he actually gained access to the near-unlimited powers of the Ten Tails, the truth-seeking orbs, and Limbo, Madara was basically invincible. Honestly, if he were to actually roam the seas of One Piece, there's not many pirates I think who would even come close to comparing to his presence. And for that reason, Madara was given the highest bounty ever recorded, <coughs> so far, at a whooping 6 
billion berries, even surpassing Roger. Okay, okay, these big bad villains are starting to get out of hand pretty quickly here, so can we just bring it down a notch before we start escalating over 10 billion berries here? You're, you've, you've gotta have someone that isn't that scary, right? On your list there. Uh, Griffith from Berserk? That's the next person on this list? Okay, well, I guess uh, he does fit in with the One Piece political warmonger type of vibe. Because you see, the White Falcon is obviously one of the most ruthless, backstabbing, and cutthroat characters in all of manga history. Griffith, after joining the God Hand and being reborn, is basically just another godlike presence. In a nutshell, he has spatial manipulation and in particular uses gravity as a weapon to fight off his enemies. He's also a master class swordsman, but arguably his most divine power is his nigh absoluteness. He transcends reality and nothing in the physical world can actually harm him. He practically exceeds the world itself and is closer to the author of the story than he's kind of a character in it. Really, to harm Griffith, you have to exist outside of the boundaries of his own story. Plus, he's also just, you know, like, really good looking for a reason. And so, this pretty boy could probably just conquer about anything that he wants, and it's no wonder that Jerry has given him an incredibly high bouncy of 4.1 billion berries. And actually, since it's kind of fun, let's keep this political mastermind theme going a little bit straight into the next bouncy on our list, Crollo Lucifer from Hunter x Hunter. Now, this guy is a true next level thinker and is the head of the so-called Phantom Troop, the Hunter x Hunter world's premier criminal organization. He is a true master of his craft and his craft is mostly being very, very evil. Having witnessed the truly vile and disgusting murder of his friend as a child, Crollo put himself through a nightmare by watching all of the world's most terrible things and as a result is basically not to anything bad in this world. Now, sure, he literally broke his own mind in order to accomplish his goals, but how does he do it? Well, he uses his raw power, tactical brain, and a very, very advanced Nen techniques to copy and steal opponents' abilities, using them as his own. Thanks to his special ability, Skill Hunter, Crollo uses his insane intellect to make his enemies meet a specific set of conditions in order to then steal their powers from them. And honestly, with an ability and a mind like his, the clear bounty for Crollo is 2 billion berries, putting him just above the One Piece criminal mastermind, Sir Crocodile. I mean, sorry Croc, but the spider has come to play and I think he's just a little bit stronger here. But our next criminal mastermind rules the world from the shadows and may just be one of the smartest anime characters to ever have successfully done it. I'm of course talking about the one and only Kida from Death Note. And while you and I know him as Light Yagami, his his bounty poster would definitely read Kida because not even the real world government would be able to track him down. You see, with his Death Note powers, he would become the death god of the One Piece world, picking off marines, pirates, and really anyone he deems unworthy with just the stroke of a pen. And honestly, thanks to the newspapers, Light would have everything that he needs to pick off anyone from the Yonko to the marine admirals, like no one would be safe with his ability. And it's for that very reason that not even the government itself is saved from him that Kida has an unbelievably high bounty of 5.5 billion berries as his threat level to the world's stability rivals that of even the pirate king Goldie Roger. And honestly, before we move on to the next even more interesting bracket of bounties, uh, why not wrap up the big brain evil villain section here with a genocidal maniac, the man who guides fate itself and the master of titans, Eren Yeager. Now, it's pretty safe to say, I think, that with his army of colossal titans, there isn't any island in the world of One Piece that would be even close to safe from him. After all, for some reason, apparently those things can swim. Now, I don't know exactly how that one is supposed to work, considering their size and weight, but in a world with continent-pulling giants and island-sized prisoners, Eren and the gang do fit right in, I think. Now, undeniably, Eren is a very 
skilled fighter and in his various titan forms could easily take over entire countries. In fact, it took the combined efforts of all the other titan shifters, the entire armies of the world and his situation ship to kill him in the end. He can harden his body to diamond levels of toughness and create massive weapons, blades and spikes that can be shot out of his body with the Warhammer abilities as well. And so yeah, let's face it, he is a gigantic world shaking threat that does deserve a bounty to match it, but he does also just need to get his head cut off in order to kill him, so he's definitely not as dangerous as everyone else so far I think, but like Jerry, what do you think? Like 3 billion berry? Does that sound good? Yeah, I, I think that, that sounds very good. And I think here's actually a good place to remind everyone who's not so familiar with One Piece that sometimes the good guys do get bounties as well. Nobody is safe from the world government, so let's take a break from godlike world destroyers and mastermind villains to now for a moment talk about some government employees from other anime. Starting of course with everyone's favorite alien dinosaur goth baddie Zero Two from Darling in the Friends. Because in case you don't know, yep, that's right, this little devil horned girl is actually a genetically engineered human slash klaxosaur hybrid, which basically allows her to be the ultimate mech suit pilot alongside her partner Hito. Now thanks to all of these genetic modifications, she is the strongest fighter among the APE special forces. All right, I see the look on your faces, all of that dinosaur robot stuff, maybe a little bit lot to take if you're not familiar with it, but listen, it's a studio trigger show. Between the likes of Kill la Kill and Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I mean, you should really expect exactly that type of thing from them. And the other thing you should expect is crazy mech transformations as well. Something that, of course, Zero Two can absolutely do. By herself, she can transform her mech Strazalia into its stampede mode. It takes on the appearance of a giant lion-like cat that tears through Klaxosaurus. But her real power is when she pilots her own mech alongside her boy toy Hito. And of course, when they combine their powers, which of course they do at some point, Strazelia fuses with Zero Two and grows to beyond the size of planet Earth. Taking on its Apis form, this massive spaceship type of thing is capable of destroying universe level threats. Like, I thought Pluton was a terrifying warship, but Zero Two here is the real deal as well. And so thanks to all of that giant planet destroying calamity level thing, Zero Two earned herself a 4 billion berry bounty, which honestly might even be way higher, but they can't afford to give her a bounty truly worthy of her destructive potential. All right, that was a bit much an extreme. Let's scale things down a little bit for you, okay? Like for the next guy, but don't get ahead of yourself because this next dude's firepower is still super hot. You get it? It's a fire pun. Anyways, the next bounty is for Roy Mustang from Full Metal Alchemist, one of my all-time favorite anime. Now, the Flame Alchemist here is not only the hero of Ishval, but an absolute terror on the battlefield. Conjuring flames with a simple snap, he can burn his opponents to a crisp. His fire is so mighty, it can even take down a homunculus with incredible regeneration powers like he did to Lust. In fact, all of the homunculi... homunculi? Homunculuses? Well, they even stated he's the most terrifying state alchemist out there, but his true goal of becoming Fura are what set him apart from everyone else. Dreams, of course, are a very powerful force, especially when it comes to giving out bounties. I mean, the greater your dream and the stronger the will to achieve it, the greater the mess they are for the world government, who just wants order and anyone to, like, just keep their head low. Nico Robin or Luffy here are the perfect example of this from One Piece and so is our new friend Roy Mustang as well. He is a true master when it comes to leadership and a force to be reckoned with across the board. So it's no wonder even politically but also strength wise that Roy D Mustang has a 5 100 million berry bounty. But for our next category, I think it's time to check back in with Jerry on uh, what other pirate threats are invading the One Piece world next. And oh my, is is that a bear? Is is, is it a cat? <laughs> it's, it's Totoro. Okay, let's face it. Sometimes the Marines do miss their mark a little bit and give out bounties to characters that have no business having a bounty or getting hunted. Now in Totoro's case, with his wondrous powers and his legendary pirate ship, the cat bus, he is a 
kind of weird threat to the world government that nonetheless would probably fit pretty smoothly into One Piece. And the government just really can't figure out what his deal here is. Does he plan to lead an army of little Totoros around to conquer the East Blue? Does he just want to hang out with the homies? Like, what's, what's his deal? Regardless, he's an unknown threat of unknown threat level who seems to inspire happiness and joy, something we do know that the top of the world government hates. In other words, Totoro, you have earned yourself a 3 billion berry bounty, even if honestly probably you're harmless, unless you believe into some very specific and disturbing and dark Ghibli theories. But that's probably a whole own video. And while animals are scary, there is an even bigger threat out there. No, literally, I'm talking about giants. And a new legend says there is a little giant who is making waves with his immense powers. He has an incredibly strong will, his smile is intoxicating, always grinning, and his potential seems to be limitless. Oh wait, oh wait, he's he's just a high school volleyball player? That That's that's a bit underwhelming. Well, I'm of course talking about Karasuno's pesky crow, Hinata Shoyo. And honestly, weirdly enough, he is absolutely the type of guy that I could imagine getting a bounty just because of his legend. You know, he falls in that kind of buggy category of just spreading insane rumors about a normal-sized boy with the powers of a giant. I mean, let's be real, the world government would love to get their hands on him and make an army of little giants, but unfortunately, they're just gonna make their super soldiers really good at volleyball, I guess. I mean, who knows? Maybe Hinata could get one touch on a cannonball or surf a crazy float ball that destroys ship if he learns some hockey or something. Probably not, though, but... Regardless, thanks to those epic rumors of his size, Hinata is getting a 100 million berry bounty in One Piece to rival that of the famous giant captains in the One Piece world as well. But someone whose power is definitely not getting mixed up is our next entry, the stunning assassin, Thorn Princess. Now by day, she is just the loving mother of the Forger family, Yor, but by night, she is the seductive nightmare captain of the Rose Pirates, Thorn Princess. Now, regardless of how she'd fit into the One Piece world, and honestly, I think it would probably be a pretty snug fit, she is a threat like no other. Trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat by the secret shadow government organization Garden, Yor can kill just about anyone she needs to. With her sharp needle-like blades, she can shatter a knife with her bare hands, and with her insane physical power, she can launch an entire car flying with a single kick. Not to mention, she can do it so fast she still has time to make it home and cook dinner as well. Even if that meal would be an entire mess, but hey, bounties aren't assigned by cooking skill, so your forger gets an impressive 75 million berry bounty. But now, I do kind of wonder what would happen if a real pirate invaded the One Piece world. Like, not a rubber guy or a surgeon or whatever this dude is. I'm talking about a real pirate, a viking, and you probably think I mean Torfin from Windland Saga, but no, he has no enemies. We're gonna talk about the man whose name makes the English and the Vikings alike shiver in fear. I'm of course talking about Torfin's father, Tors, uh, who, well, I guess at this point also has no enemies now, but since he's far more famous in his show than Torfin, we're gonna be talking about him. And what can I say? This guy is just a walking, talking beast. A man who can take a rain of an arrow fire from the skies, moving battleships with a single step, and take down a berserker with his bare fists. Like, those things are no joke. He's a master fighter capable of taking down an entire crew without a single weapon, and when you put a sword or a dagger in his hand, well, let's just say nobody is walking away from that man alive unless he wants you to. Now, after he settled down, had some kids, and became the village leader, he became a pretty chill dude actually, but as we all know, a bounty is issued based on your potential and your crimes, not on, you know, your mental change, and since he is a living, walking and talking demon, Tors is easily getting a 100 million berry bounty. And meanwhile, on the other side of the medieval fantasy genre, we have the immortal elf mage that is taking anime by storm. Freerun. Freerun is an eternal scholar with a wealth of knowledge. From magic to history, this elf is truly something else. Not to mention she's just 
pretty rad. She's satirical, funny, and pretty quick with it. And well, she's also an incredibly talented mage who can level entire towns, it turns out. You know, no big deal, but something we should probably address. Now, with insane fire magic like Fall Zumble, she can easily keep up with top tier threats from almost all universes. But honestly, in One Piece specifically, knowledge is power and her eternal life and quest to learn whatever she can is what makes her the real threat here. Freeran is truly a threat unlike anyone else on this list, similar to Nico Robin, thus earning her a 2.5 billion berry bounty for trying to learn the past history. But next, how about we shift over from an old hack that looks like a kit to an actual kit Kit who should be an old geezer like Jerry is that is that Jerry is that a is that a Pikachu? Ugh. You can't put Pikachus in the video. Now Ash is gonna come and catch them all. That, that we, we've been over this. All right. God damn it. They're everywhere. All right. All the Pikachus aside, this little menace is just truly something else. I mean, you can't stop this kit. You say get eight badges across the entire country and challenge a league of adults. He does it in a couple of months. He loses at the Indigo Plateau. Well, he spends the next year of his life completely laying waste to every functioning adult in his world on his quest to become a true Pokemon master. In a strange way, he's arguably the most pirate out of anyone on this list. I mean, he goes region to region, city to city, defeating their adult leaders in battle emotionally kind of humiliating them forever. And then he challenges the government of every country and eventually took over the island nation of Alola all by himself. So starting to sound like a pirate now, huh? You, you get what I'm saying here. Just wait because he used that title and challenged the greatest champions of all time in a tournament and then just beat all of them. In other words, this little kid is on top of the world. He is the greatest Pokemon trainer in the entire world. And he's gonna come for the One Piece world next with a bunch of overpowered monsters. So hide your kids, hide your pets. He's got a Pokedex and a new dream to be king of the pirates. And with that attitude, Jerry, you've got to give him at least a 3 billion berry bounty, at least. like. Eggs. Kids are terrifying, especially if they should be way older by now. Oh, what's wrong with you, Ash? Why are you not getting older? Anyways, can we get an adult here, please, next? Oh, good, okay. It's it's the cape, Baldy. Fantastic. Okay, this dude will be easy. Saitama, the One Punch Man, is arguably the most powerful character on this entire list so far, depending on who you ask, of course. He's capable of defeating everyone in a single blow and can even destroy stars light years away if he's given it his actual all. He can also time travel. Yeah, that's a thing that happened once. Who knows, this dude is a living joke in a way, but it's also perfectly on brand that because of his appearance and accident-prone lifestyle, nobody would even clock that he is truly that powerful. I mean, come on, it happened in his own story and it's bound to happen here again. Like, let me pull up his bounty. Yeah, knew it. There it is. One thousand berries. And apparently that's only because he committed minor tax fraud and just owes the world government a little bit of money. Uh, okay, but on the flip side, let's talk about a literal divine level space pirate. Am I talking about Harlock? Nah, that's way too obvious. What about Marika Kato? Nope, she's too nice. No, I'm referring to the Galactic Emperor Frieza. And let me be real here, next to Ash Ketchum for whatever reason, Frieza is probably the most pirate someone can be. He conquers planets, absorbing them into his grand fleet, he rules with an iron fist, and trust me, you do not want to step to this little alien. Sure, he may be small, but he has the power to destroy planets, defeat gods, and surpass his own limits in a matter of minutes. Not only that, he was able to lay waste to entire galaxies and he never trained a day in his life, which is honestly the most frustrating. It really took Goku 26 years to achieve the power that Frieza had by default. And 
In the Resurrection F arc, after training for the first time, Frieza achieved the Golden Transformation, a stylish, gold-themed outfit that gives major pirate treasure vibes, I feel like. But more importantly, Golden Freezer is stronger than nearly every fighter in the Dragon Ball multiverse. Really, only a little bit weaker than the likes of Jiren and Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku. And once he realized he wasn't the strongest anymore, Frieza needed to change that, so he found his own room of spirit and time and trained for the second time in his life, and once he did that, he just broke the universe. No, literally. He transformed into Black Frieza and defeated the strongest characters in his universe, Goku, Vegeta, and Gas, in a single blow. Like, honestly, I kind of feel like you can't even give Frieza a bounty. He can destroy the world by snapping his fingers. Nobody can really stop him, so why even give him a bounty? Like, good job, Freezer. You broke my video. I hope you're proud of yourself. Let's go. Let's go back to some measurable bound. Like we need to get back to the topic. All right, Jerry, you got something better for me that we can actually measure. Uh, okay. Well, now that the space emperor is out of the way, let's move on to our next bounty here. And honestly, I guess he does need no introduction. But I do have a question instead for you. Does he have the highest bounty because he is Satoru Gojo or? Is he Satoru Gojo because he has the highest bounty? And while I know that this might now come shocking to you because, well, Sukuna did kind of wipe the floor with him, I have a good reason that Gojo would have an actual higher bounty. Now, obviously, he is no joke as a fighter. After he was enlightened, Gojo transcended Jujutsu society. He's got the six eyes and infinity that makes him almost impossible to hit, reverse curse technique that lets him heal entire body parts, including his brain, and his curse technique that manipulates gravity. Not to mention Hollow Purple, the ultimate move that destroys everything in its path, or his domain expansion, Infinity void, a realm that, well, literally fills the opponent's mind with everything, everywhere, all at once. Huh, get it? Now, these are all great fighting moves, you know, but I think Gojo's real threat for the One Piece world lies in that devilish smile of his. No, for real. He's actually just the coolest guy around, and that can be really scary. I mean, this dude can get anyone to have a great time, whether you're cold and calculated like Nanami no Ghetto or a complete maniac like Sukuna, everyone loves Gojo. He could form a crew that could conquer the world in a heartbeat and for that reason alone, he's gonna pop in and get a disgustingly high 6.1 billion berry bounty. And really, no matter what they're worth, all of the characters we've talked about so far are easily some of the strongest that their universes have to offer, and most of them are real heavyweights as well. I mean, I wonder if they could live heavyweights as well? Well, I don't have to question that because there actually is this video right here we made that covers exactly that. We did the math, it's my list of the physically all-time strongest characters in anime, and you'll definitely see some very familiar faces on this list. So check it out. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what other crazy anime characters could have insane bounties, and, you know, if you guys enjoyed this, we can do a follow-up video. Otherwise, I'll see you so far in the next one. Peace.